Awesome. In the beginning, we talked about how you grew from, took you eight years to yeah. go from zero to a million dollars, right? right? Uh, I think a lot of my audience, they're entrepreneurs or they want mm -hmm. to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. And what's that like in the first eight years? What are some of the, the mistakes that you made? Some, some of the failures you've mm -hmm. had, right? Yeah, Dan, it, you know, going from zero to a million in eight years, some people said, wow, that was quick. Yes. No, it was way too slow because <laughs> yes. now we do a million on a given day Correct. with 1-800-GOT-JUNK. It's, it's crazy. When I look back to those days, 1994, the biggest failure I've ever had it, to, to start up was first five years into the business and I got rid of my entire company and started again. Wow. And we talked earlier about yes. how it's all about people, yes. finding the right people and treating them right. I yes. learned that that day because I had people that I wasn't giving the love and support that they needed to be successful. Mm -hmm. But the real problem was I didn't hire people that I would consider friends. Were they just like college friends, like buddies and, and stuff like that? They just weren't clean cut. They weren't professional. Mm -hmm. They were spending more time out of the truck smoking than they were working. Mm -hmm. They just weren't my type of people. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if I was going to build the FedEx of junk removal, I needed to have friendly, yes. uniformed drivers. I'd have people that were happy. And so we've actually shifted all of our recruiting to uh, a methodology of hire happy people. That's oh, all it is. Okay. Everyone okay. we hire, we want people that smile. You know, you've been in here for in the office for a Everyone while. You've been smiling, smiling the whole time as well, right? 100%. And it's like, how do you find people that you'd like to be friends with, that you'd like to have a beer with? When we hire and recruit, that's what we look for. What, what, what's your hiring process today? Like someone, they say you want to bring someone in. What, what does that look like? Yeah, so we hire an attitude, train on skills. So the, the interview process is really spending time making sure that we've got enough people vetting that that person is actually a good, happy, mm. fun person and mm. that they fit our culture. Mm -hmm. We call it the beer and barbecue test. First, we put them through the beer test. Each person that interviews says, would, would I have a beer with this person? Do I like them? Are they interesting? Are they interested? The, then we put them through the barbecue test. How would they fit at a company barbecue? Uh, we've got lots of diversity. We've got yes. lots of introverts and extroverts. Yes, yes. We're not trying to hire people that are all the same. Yes. But what we're wondering is, how would they fit in a company would barbecue? Would they feel do awkward? They... Would they feel odd, right? Yeah, do they fit in our community? Mm -hmm. And you could see it huddled today when you were there. Yes. It's a community, it's a family, yes, it and is. everybody's having fun and laughing. Yes. and. It's, it just works. So I think that most entrepreneurs and leaders get out there and they don't really focus as much on hiring. They want to bum in seats. They don't really focus on just finding to the get, right get a person. job, get something to do, do some, get some tasks done, right? Exactly. Mm. And and do you have a, in terms of techniques? Do you have uh, do you have your manager interview them? Do, do they go through multiple interviews or what questions do you ask? Yeah, we put th people through multiple interviews. Okay. So when I meet someone, I don't interview and hire as much as I used to, but when I do, I'll ask someone, hey, how many times have you been in? And they'll say six, seven, eight. Wow. And I'll joke that they're almost halfway there. Yeah. I mean, we would interview someone probably typically five or six times, Wow. but sometimes as many as 10 or 11. Wow. Because we want to be sure. And you'll get some employees that get, fr potential employees that get frustrated with that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're they realize the right this isn't the place for them. Yeah. And you want them to weed themselves out of yes. that process. And when, what do you do differently? Like the first interview, second or third, or do you just have different people interview them? We have different people interview, okay. sometimes looking for different things. Okay. But what I'm trying to these days inspire people to do is, is don't make things all about the, tell me about a time when you did this, this and that, and get all hypothetical about this behavior-based mm -hmm. interviewing. Ask somebody what makes them tick. What mm -hmm. do they love in life? When, you know, get them to tell you stories of mm. their own personal life and their passions and their achievements. To get to know them personally. Yeah, I mean, I you go to a bar, you don't say, yeah. you don't talk like that. Yeah, yes, you go right. to a bar and you hang out with someone, you're like, so what's up, what's going on? Yes. And get them talking yes. and get them being real and comfortable and being themselves because that's the type of person you want to know. And then afterwards, uh, do you have a probation period, like a 90 day, 60 day? By law in Vancouver, everyone's on a 90-day probation yeah. period. We yeah. try and bring someone in with the hope that, you know, this is long-term. Yeah. This is forever. Let's make this work. From your company, because from before, one-man operation to now how many people in your company in total? We've got about 550 people in the head office between yes. Vancouver and Toronto. Yes. Between all brands and all the people out in the field hauling junk or cleaning windows, whatever yeah. the brand might be, yes. there's probably about 6,000 people. Wow. So 6,000 core group 500 how do you transition from a, a 
like a lone wolf entrepreneur to now managing this massive team of people. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about integrator. Like talk to us a little bit about that. What advice would you have entrepreneurs for? Let's say go from one to mm -hmm. 10 people, 20 people, 50, 100. Yeah, it's difficult, I think, to let go. Oh, I think yes. many entrepreneurs, and I'm sure you've seen this, they fail because they're in their own way. Yes, the control freaks, right? They're yeah. like, yeah. And you know, we think as entrepreneurs, no one can do it better. Mm. But I started to realize that, yes, there's a lot of people that can do things better. Yes, true. So we had That's our true. first PR hire. So I used to be great at PR, and I'd yeah. pick up the phone, and I'd call CNN and Wall Street Journal. We wanted to get on the Oprah Winfrey Show. It was on our Can You Imagine wall. So we tasked a guy with it named Tyler Wright. He was yes. our first PR hire. He had yeah. zero PR experience. I love it. So we bring him in. He gets out there and he just starts pitching and figuring it out on the fly. Yes. I couldn't have done it because I probably would have given up too soon. Yes. He pitched for 14 months until we were successful and wow. he got us on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Wow. So I realized people can do things better than me. Yes. So as an entrepreneur, my job as, as the, the visionary versus the integrator, mm -hmm. Maybe talk to us a little bit about that for those who are not familiar with the concept. Yeah, so there's a book called Rocket Fuel, which Rocket really Fuel. talks about the fact that you've got a visionary and an implementer. Two heads are better than one, or you've got this two in the box concept. Yeah, Steve Jobs call and, it. and Steve Walkneck, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and if you look at every business, they've all had that. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill Gates, he had Steve Ballmer. Yes. They, they've got someone who's a visionary, someone who's the implementer. Mm -hmm you're better off working together and figuring out how to really mesh with that person. Yes. And so if I look at what I do as an entrepreneur, I think I'm a culture guy. I think I'm a vision guy. Where Big are picture. we going? What does it look like? How do I get out of the way of everything else? Mm. So I took PR off my plate. Mm. I took finance off my plate. <laughs> I took the call center off my plate. So yeah. gradually I let go. Yes. And I realized there's way smarter people out there. There's that quote, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yes, true. I was yeah. constantly in the wrong room because mm. I felt like I was the smartest guy. Mm. But when I realized, no, there's people that have way more passion for call centers, yes. way more passion for marketing, yes. get out of the way and let them do their job. Yes. That's been unbelievable. So bringing in an integrator, mm. Eric Church, seven and a half years here, unbelievable because the magic is he's so good at building a team, mm. leading a team towards the vision that I and he create. Right that it just, it, it takes the stress away from the things that I What was that I don't Eric's like do. background before? Yeah, so Eric was in the military, Canadian military for a period of time. Yeah, so structure, discipline. Understands routine mm -hmm. and, and hard work and focus. And then Eric was also a guy who was part of EF, the largest travel tourism country in the world mm -hmm. based out of, out of Sweden. And he was running their Canadian operation, I think a couple hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. But he wanted something more entrepreneurial. He, like myself, and this is partially why it was such a great fit. He loves watching entrepreneurs grow. Mm. So nothing drives me more than finding someone who's a young, hungry, future shack shine yes. franchise partner who grows with the business. Yes. And Eric is the executor to help make all that happen. I love it. I love it. And then from there, uh, how do you structure your, like say your management team? How does that, how do you, so you're Brian, you have Eric, and then what's, what's the rest of the, let's say, organization of the like? Yeah, so I think if you took an organizational chart and you have this one box at the top, mm. it really is what we call two in the box. Mm. Eric and Brian mm. are in that same box. Got it. Running the leadership team. Mm. But the leadership team really is Eric's team. Okay. I participate, I give ideas, but he's managing the team, he's leading the team, he's checking in on goals and on progress. Mm. And then they have their own teams. So, so in what, uh, how many boxes you have on, on the leadership team? It's probably about 11 right now, which is too many. Okay. And Eric knows the ideal number is about seven. Yes, seven, yes. So it is figuring out how do we- So one, one to... for call center, like how do you divide it though? Yeah, so it would be finance, we have a CFO, Operation. it would be head of marketing, yeah. it would be franchise development. Yes. It would then be all the other brands. Got so it. we have a managing director of Wow One Day Painting. Okay. You move me okay. and Shaq And they are the ones that's accountable for the results. For of that, that brand. That, that brand. Yeah, Got the top it. line, the bottom line, Got it's it. their business, they're running it. Wow. So then in that way, it's interesting because as big as the company, but it's very entrepreneurial, right? It's a very entrepreneurial company. The thing that really I think is unique and special about O2E Brands mm. is we're taking ordinary businesses mm. and making them exceptional through customer service, through an entrepreneurial attitude, mm. through giving people an opportunity to build their own franchise, but also we've got entrepreneurs here. 
the people inside our head office, mm. many who you've met, mm. who are working hard to help support our franchise owners. Correct. Correct. So it's, a, it's an entrepreneurial business and it's why we've created this open office environment. I love We're it. in it together. I love it. In terms of managing, uh, manage, uh, the managing partners um, in the different, different brands, did you find them outside the company or did you promote them from within? So let's see, we have found, yeah, everybody has come from within the company. Because they've and, been with you for a long time. And they promoted, yeah. So 1-800-GOT-JUNK, our managing director there, David St. James, started in a sales role and grew within. We had James Alish on Wow One Day Painting, who also was internal to the business. He left for a short period of time, but came back. Yeah, it's it's hard to find someone from the outside to come in and truly get the culture and Correct. the people in the same Correct. way that you need. I love it. And then what about in terms of like, I know this is like what I want to learn from Brian, operations, right? right. We've gone through the, the morning huddle, like talk to us. How do you keep the team motivated, keep them accountable? Like what, what do you do, weekly meetings or monthly meetings or team meetings, like, what, like the details, mm -hmm. what do you do? Yeah, so we have a lot of meeting rhythms. Yes. I mean, unfortunately, we, it seems like we have a lot of meetings, but we try and make sure they're very high impact and at the right cycle okay, okay, of time. Okay, okay. So a daily meeting we have, mm -hmm. huddle, seven minutes, stand cool. up, bring everyone together. Awesome. How are we doing? How are our numbers? What do we need to work on in the future? We then have a weekly leadership meeting. Okay where we would sit down and really tap into what are the big strategic priorities. It'll be you with the 11, right? Yeah, actually, I, I should say, sorry, we have a monthly, monthly leadership team leadership, meeting. Okay. So once a month, I'm in that meeting, it's Eric's meeting, but I'm again, a participant and-, and With all the, all the directors. Exactly. Got it. We also have the leadership team gets together once a day and they do their own huddle by phone. Okay. So 8 a.m. every single day, okay. they gather as a team because many people travel. Sure, like, and short, 10 minutes, but a check-in as to what's your top one for the day? Mm. How are you doing? What was your top one for yesterday? How did it go? Nice. And so we can face any blocks or challenges in that call. Nice. I don't participate in that call because yes. I don't want to be in the day-to-day -day weeds. Mm. As the visionary, I have to be in the monthly meeting. Correct. Which is more my Correct. area. Correct, okay. So day daily meeting for the directors, uh, huddle. What about in terms of the directors with the team? How do they manage it? Yeah, so the directors and the team, our marketing department will have every Monday morning a stand-up huddle. Okay. The IT team, the call center team, they have their own stand-up huddles. Okay. So we believe in stand-up meetings because- it's quick. It's quick. Yeah. You're not just sitting around, you're yeah. not on your phone, you're yeah. not on your, your laptop, and people have a chance to connect and keep it a little more casual, nice. but to keep it quick. Nice. And what about you, so besides meeting with uh, your, your directors once a month, uh, what other meetings do you do? Yeah, my meetings are more storytelling, getting out there, meeting people like you, mm -hmm. visiting other companies, mm -hmm. telling stories to the press. Those strategic relationships, right? Yeah, yeah, or I'm more, again, I'm, I'm building relationships, I'm seeking out opportunities, I'm building out opportunities, I'm mentoring people. I do a lot of phone calls while I'm in my car mm -hmm. where someone has some questions on franchising. Great, 